What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? It's your boy Kevin to turn on this motherfucking YouTube shit. What's up? What's up? What's up? It's sh your boy. Can't show you do shit. We are lit. Lit to Timmy. Turn, 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 turn. Today, it's my fucking day. Straight hood outside. Big crib shit, man. Hope y'all enjoy these videos, man. Kevin, two turn option for the one time, one time. Um, free Palestine, free Congo. Russia do your thing and Texas stand the fuck up, man. Hope y'all be enjoying these videos, man. Make sure you like and subscribe. Keep on um, helping your boy out. Promote the, the positivity, the real, man. We're going to keep on telling the truth, man. Hope y'all enjoy these videos. Um, each day is a new day to be yourself, to be a version, a, new, a better version of yourself. The same on me, but upgraded every day. You know what I'm saying? Never get addicted to the old. Always be willing to, to upgrade and get better, gang. And yeah, hope y'all enjoy this video. Come to the Hebrew Israelite man as a real Jew man. Make sure y'all like and subscribe. Share the video, post out, man. We out here. Alright. <clears throat> Today, it's a motherfucking day. Straight hood outside crib shit. In the game. Alright, man. So, you know what I'm saying? It's been a minute, man. It's been two, two three years. Four years since the tragic events that came occurred in Memphis, man. You know what I'm saying? Young Dolph. Um, but a lot has been going down left and right. If you have anything or anything to do with the Young Dolph and the Yo Gotti shit, it's looking like you almost fucked at this moment. You know what I'm saying? It's like it, all the henchmen, all the lackeys, all the push arounds, who was a part of this 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 case where the shit has been blamed. All of them. From restaurants to grandma houses to riding in cars to getting set up. You know what I'm saying? Niggas again fuck about you. You know what I'm saying? Um which yo guy should have expected this. If young Dolph is a respected legend in the Memphis. You don't think that this nigga not gonna have no goons set around waiting for the shit to come back? You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't, you know, people don't be thinking about that. You know, like I said, man, people be looking at the music, the rap music, and the uh, and the songs, and the, and the internet. Once you start getting a little bit of clout in the internet, narrative is getting pushed around. Then, you know, you get to the streets, niggas start saying, Young Dolph, the king of Memphis and shit. It probably made a nigga mad. You know what I'm saying? Nigga worked so hard, and a nigga came out of nowhere, and, and, and but he put the same type of work in, but came out of nowhere and, and took the shine like that. And then you try to make that nigga part of your group, and he's like, hell no, nah, nigga. That's what I don't understand. Why niggas just don't stay in their own lane? Why do niggas have to go into other niggas' lane and try to try to press the issue? Just because, you know what I'm saying, you put out some shit, this nigga ain't hey, the same way. You know what I'm saying? Now, now, yo got your brother, Big Jug gone. So we really got this shit for Key Glock. You know what I'm saying? Because they can't say that Key Glock had something to do with it or whatever part of murder trial or you know he got arrested for a gun so we trying to see what's going to happen with Key Glock man you know I don't think Key Glock going to be making a lot of music like that it's going to even make hit mainstream because you know, like I said Young Dolph was the person that made the mainstream shit for them you know what I'm saying so at the end of the day you know I feel like Key Glock you know he feels the type of way you know what I'm saying like damn you took out my cousin he was the whole PR, PR, he wants to set up the foundation, and he took him out because you mad because he want to join your rap group. Then young, the black youngster joining this shit, you know what I'm saying? So, hey man, we all be looking at these videos, man. I hope y'all enjoy these videos. Make sure you like and subscribe, and continue to support your boy, man. Like I said, we continue to pop the positivity in the real, man, and let's get it.
scene and became a star. But when he tried to level up and start his own label, nobody knew how bad it was going to get. From his artists getting into shootouts to people dying at concerts, this is the wild story of CMG. Yo, god he's been in the rap game since he was 14 years old. He didn't blow up overnight, though. He had to stay on the grind for years before his name started buzzing. When he was a teenager, he stayed up all night hustling in the streets and was working on his rap skills at the same time. Back in the day, Gotti would drive all over Memphis handing out mixtapes and performing at clubs. He had to hustle hard to get to the top, but eventually all the hard work paid off and he started becoming one of the most popular rappers in the South. Gotti turned himself into a star, but it was Birdman and Slim from Cash Money Records who really inspired Yo Gotti to take everything to another level. Back when Lil Wayne was about to drop the Carter, Birdman flew Gotti out to his mansion in New Orleans and let him hear the album before anyone else. When Gotti saw how Birdman had 15 cars parked outside his mansion and was really living the life he rapped about, Gotti knew he could get there too. Gotti never signed with Cash Money, but Birdman showed him how to move in the industry and hired Gotti to help find new artists for Cash Money to sign. Then in 2011, Gotti goes with Birdman during Wayne's tour. By that time, Lil Wayne was the hottest rapper in the world. Gotti told Billboard he could tell how much the success meant to Birdman and said he had this look on his face like, niggas ain't fucking with us. We done this shit. I was amazed by that. I wanted that. So the next year, Gotti made his own label after he signed a massive deal with Epic Records. He called it Cocaine Music Group back then, but another star in the game convinced Gotti to change the name. After Gotti broke the news about Cocaine Music Group, 50 Cent hit him up and said he should change it because they're going to be scared of that. Yo Gotti knew 50 Cent was probably right, so he started calling the label Collective Music Group instead. Gotti wanted to start his own label and take over the rap game, but three years went by and he still hadn't signed any rappers. Around the same time Yo Gotti was trying to launch CMG, Young Dolph was building up a crazy buzz in Memphis. He had been dropping music since 2008, and just like Gotti, he had to stay on the grind to make it work. Dolph was all about being independent and started his own Paper Route Empire label back in 2010. And since he didn't have a deal with anyone, he could run his own career without listening to anyone else. Dolph came up in the streets and was in the trenches for a long time before he got in the booth. According to some sources, Dolph even used to be the plug for Yo Gotti's brother. So when Dolph started popping off in the industry, it made sense for Gotti to reach out and try to sign him. Gotti wanted young Dolph to be his first artist on the CMG label. But why? At that point, Dolph had already invested too much money and time into his own career to start riding someone else's wave. Dolph told Sway that if he signed with Gotti, then everyone would say he was only popping because of Gotti. Say, like, Gotti, like, Gotti wanted me to do the, like, man, come on, bro, let's do CMG paper route. It's cool. I don't knock him for that. If I was him, I would have came to me like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But only thing that was going to happen behind it was people like, oh, he popped off because of Gotti. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which I can't do that because I got too much of my own time and money. Man. So he wanted to just make his own lane and stay independent. Sway said that Gotti would respect the move because he handled his own career the same way and did it all by himself. And I know Gotti would respect that because he did the same thing. That's not how it all went down. After Young Dolph turned down the offer, Yo Gotti went a different direction and signed another Memphis rapper named Black Youngster. Black Youngster was on the come up after his track Heavy popped off. And one day he walked up to where Gotti was shooting a music video and started blasting his own music. Gotti liked how Black Youngster was moving and knew he had some buzz on his name. So he officially signed Black Youngster to CMG in 2015. CMG was just getting started, but there was drama from the jump, and Black Youngster almost ended up in prison because of Yo Gotti's beef with Young Dolph. Everyone thought Dolph and Gotti was still cool after Dolph turned the deal down, but that all changed in 2016. Dolph dropped his debut album, King of Memphis, that year, and Gotti was pressed about the title because Yo Gotti had been calling himself the King of Memphis for years. Apparently, there was already some tension going down behind the scenes, and Dolph hopped on Twitter and dissed Yo Gotti when he tweeted, Bro went from being my number one fan and wanted to sign me to being my biggest hater. Hashtag facts. Gotti did If they just would have stayed in, if Yo Gotti would just stayed in his lane, they would have stayed in their each own lane. This would never happen. You a soft ass nigga, you nice ass nigga. If you got a problem, nigga, say you got a problem. Shake ass, bitch ass nigga. He ain't no motherfucking king of Memphis. He ain't king of South Memphis. He ain't from the city. So Dolph clapped back and dissed Yo Gotti for sending black young at him instead of handling the situation himself. I've been spraying your bitch ass for years, nigga, and the whole city know that. Ho Gotti, you was a bitch ass nigga. I just got back to the city. They say you trying to put charges on me and put the police on me. You send your little nigga out to do all your talking. The beef kept heating up after that, and Black Youngster allegedly tried to kill Dolph in North Carolina. 
Someone pulled up while Dolph was on tour and sprayed a hundred rounds into his whip. But luckily, nobody was hit. The black youngster and two of his homies ended up getting booked over the situation. But the charges were later dropped because the cops didn't have enough evidence. Black youngster skated on the case, but he claimed Dolph was snitching on the track Bulletproof when he raps. If you got love for me, can you add young Dolph and tell him don't show up? I'm just saying, homie. Why you give them people statements? Why you rap about that shit so your album will go crazy? Niggas do anything for the album sales. Fuck everybody that said that I'll fail. They say when I die, I'ma go to hell. You lost your bet if you bet that I'll tell. The beef cooled off for a while. But then in November 2021, Young Dolph was shot and killed in Memphis. There's nothing tying Black Youngster to the shooting, but a few weeks after Dolph's murder, Black Youngster allegedly sent more shots on the track, I'm assuming, and raps. All that throwing them slick shots on the gram, that's how you end up dead. And I don't got love for no pussy nigga. I want off with his head. And I don't give no fuck about what you rap. You know my ops, they bled. I done bust out shots for other niggas, cause other niggas was scared. Then a video came out where Black Youngster was rapping his Dolph diss track, Shake Some, at a show in Texas. A lot of people were mad that he was still dissing Dolph after he died. And rumors started flying that Gotti had dropped Black Youngster from the label because of all the drama. A lot of people already thought Gotti was involved with Dolph's death. And Black Youngster moving like that just made him even more suspicious. Gotti called the rumors cap though and said, Lil Bro a boss, he can't be dropped. Hashtag CMG, hashtag heavy camp. Black Youngster wasn't dropped from the label, but his career fell off like crazy. Back in the day, he was racking up hundreds of millions of streams and getting bigger every time he dropped a project. He even started his own label called Heavy Camp under CMG, but none of his artists were making any noise in the industry. And on the last few projects Black Youngster dropped, most of the tracks didn't even break 50k streams. Black Youngster sparked a lot of drama in his career, and he allegedly helped set up another rapper who was supposed to sign with CMG. Shy Glizzy isn't from Memphis, but back in 2015, he was rocking with Yo Gotti, and rumors were flying that he was going to be the next rapper to sign with CMG. Shy Glizzy had been in the game for a few years, and was getting a lot of shine even though he was independent. And in 2013, he even had Gotti on his mixtape, Law 2. Shy Glizzy was also working with stars like Young Thug, ASAP Rocky, and 2 Chains. And in 2015, Double XL put him on their freshman class list. He was blowing up like crazy. Yo Gotti allegedly really wanted to sign him as an artist. Shy Glizzy started spending a lot of time in Memphis, and that's how he ended up getting robbed by the people who were supposed to be rocking with him. There are a lot of rumors about how it all went down. This you can't really be rocking around now, niggas you don't know. Sources. Yo Gotti allegedly made Shy Glizzy an offer to sign with CMG, but Shy Glizzy turned Gotti down just like Young Dolph did. Shy was still cool with Gotti and the rest of the CMG camp though. And in December 2015, Shy Glizzy had a show at Dream Nightclub in Memphis. According to reports, he was with some connections he made in Memphis through Gotti and Black Youngster, and they were supposed to hold him down while he was in the city. But after the show, Shy ended up getting into a fight with the dude, and his chain fell off and hit the floor. Someone snatched the chain from the ground, and then someone oh, yeah. was watching a video showing it off and dissing Shy Glizzy. After the chain was stolen, Black Youngster posted a video where he was allegedly paying the dudes who took it 10k to get the chain back for Shy Glizzy. Everyone thought Black Youngster was helping Shy out, but according to Shy, that's not how it went down. He approached me, I pushed them, we got into a little scuffle. My shit came off, but the niggas that, that was telling me to top in, them the niggas that had the motherfucking chain the whole time. So like, it's like, why the fuck would I, you know what I'm saying, top in what? Some niggas that, you know what I'm saying, on some scheme and shit like this. So the whole play was put together. Shy also said that Black Youngster didn't pay anyone for the chain, and if Black Youngster really wanted to help him out, he wouldn't have made a video about the situation. Shy Glizzy said they were supposed to be homies, but he wasn't rocking with how everything went down. He said he was so tight with Gotti, it was to the point he would have done anything for him. But after the chain situation, he was saying, fuck you niggas. I fucked with Gotti to where it's the point I would have done anything for him. Anything. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, that shit kind of was, that shit made me look at the whole game different. I started moving Fuck, you know, I've been, it been fucked, you niggas, but after that, it's like, man, fuck. He like Meek Mill. A lot of people were dissing Gotti and Black Youngster over the whole Shy Glizzy thing, but fans thought he made the perfect move when he signed his next artist to CMG. Money back, yo, came up in the streets of Memphis just like yo, Gotti and Black Youngster, so it seemed like he was a perfect fit for the label. Money back, yo, was getting a lot of buzz in Memphis after grinding it out for a few years, and in 2016, he ended up signing with CMG. 
Some fans were surprised though, because Moneybag Yo was cool with Young Dolph and had linked up with him in the studio. But it gets way deeper than that. Moneybag is from the south side of Memphis and Gotti's from the north. The two sides of the city have had major issues for years. So a lot of people were shocked that Moneybag started rocking with dudes from the north. Moneybag was also tight with another rapper from the south named OG Boo Dirty, who got into a wild situation with Gotti back in the day that ended with someone getting killed. Back in 2010, OG Boo Dirty and Yo Gotti were arguing outside of a club in Memphis and someone tried to get in between them to break it up. OG Boo Dirty allegedly punched the dude who got in the middle and that's when everything popped off for real. Shots started going off and six people ended up getting hit. Yo Gotti and OG Boo Dirty both got booked for starting the riot, but all the charges were later dropped. One of the people who got shot at the nightclub died and OG Boo Dirty allegedly pulled the trigger, but he skated on the whole case and dropped a diss track aimed at Yo Gotti. Yo Gotti also had issues with OG Boo Dirty's brother, Stupid Duke, but Moneybag was cool with him back in the day too. That all changed when Moneybag signed with CMG though, and a lot of people in the South dissed Moneybag for switching sides. Moneybag Yo is still with CMG, but rumors say he's been trying to get off the label ever since Dolph died. Moneybag started his own label, Bread Gang, and has been trying to level up his career. He's trying to get away from all the drama that CMG has going on. But Moneybag's own label lost an artist back in 2022 when Big Nooski was shot and killed in Memphis. Moneybag is the one who convinced Big Nooski to hop in the booth and get out of the streets. But unfortunately, Big Nooski still got caught up in some drama and ended up dead. Big Nooski's cousin is another Memphis rapper named Big 30, and he signed the Moneybag's label uh, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. A lot of fans thought he was on Big CMG, 30. but Big 30 hopped yeah, on social beef. media and made sure everyone knew he wasn't with the label and just had a deal with Moneybag, yo. I'm not CMG. CMG, yo, got it, and they just the family. I'm not CMG, I'm in it, man. In it for life, in the great guy, man. It's all I have. If Money Back Yo leaves, it'll be a huge loss for CMG. But this next rapper hasn't dropped anything with the label in years. In 2018, Blockboy JB was one of the hottest rappers in the game. He came up in North Memphis and started dropping music in 2012. Around 2018 is when everything really changed for him. Blockboy dropped the track Shoot, and the dance he made to go with the track went viral and even ended up in Fortnite. Then he kept the momentum up with the track Rover and got even more buzz when 21 Savage hopped on the remix. Blockboy was on his way up, but nobody had any idea how crazy his next hit was going to be. He linked up with Drake for the track Look Alive and almost hit a billion streams on Spotify. Rumors are flying that Blockboy was going to sign with Drake's OVO label after they made the track, but the deal never worked out. After that, Blockboy fell off for a few years, and then in 2022, News broke out of nowhere that he was signing with Yo Gotti at CMG. Fans thought the move might help Blockboy get his career popping again, but he only dropped one project on the label and hasn't been heard from since. CMG even put out a tape in 2023 with every artist on the label, but Blockboy wasn't featured on any of the tracks. It's not clear what he's trying to do with his career right now, but obviously Yo Gotti wasn't able to help him get his momentum back up. Gotti wasn't having a lot of success with his artists from Memphis, but when he signed a rapper from Detroit, nobody expected how bad the situation was going to get. Votu Doug came up in Detroit, but Yo Gotti was a massive influence on him in the rap game. Votu Doug linked up with Lil Baby and got some buzz to Doug. And that's how he ended up signing to Lil Baby's 4PF label and CMG at the same time. Votu Doug started popping off with tracks like Grace and We Pay. But then the news came out that he was running from the cops. Votu Doug had a felony conviction back in the day and wasn't able to be around guns. But in 2019, the cops spotted him shooting at a shooting range in Atlanta. Then a few months later, the cops tried to pull him over after Foto Doug ran a stop sign, but he did the race and spent two months on the run. They caught him in August 2020 and hit him with another felony charge for fleeing the police, and Doug was sentenced to six months in a prison camp. The judge let him out on bond, but Foto Doug decided to do the race again and ran away. While he was on the run, Votu Doug tried to file a court claim that said he was a sovereign citizen and couldn't be arrested by the feds. But a month later, they caught up to him again and he ended up behind bars. While he was locked up, Votu Doug hopped on Instagram and said that the prison wasn't even giving him hot water to heat his food up and that he had to use water from the shower just to eat. Yo Gotti jumped in to help out and said he'd pay two meals to any lawyer that could get Votu Doug out early. Yo Gotti stayed behind his artist and Votu Doug ends up coming home in 2023. But then he got into some industry drama with one of the biggest rappers in the world. In January 2024, WAC 100 went on No Jumper and said that Offset and Foto Doug were shooting dice at the Quality Control Record Studio and the situation went left. Offset walks right up, 
And Doug's walking away from him, grabs his left pocket. It's money bulging out of it. He didn't take the money out of his pocket, right? I don't know if he was attempting to take it or he was just trying to turn him around or what it was. Nevertheless, Doug ends up turning around. When he turned around, offset five. In the face. Right in the face. Vote to Doug called Cap on the situation. But then Wack leaked some alleged DMs with Offset. Where Damn. Offset story and said that Vote to Doug was lying. It's not clear what really went down that night. Y'all can pause to see what they saying on that on the, on the text message, but that's crazy. After three people were killed at her concert. Lo Rilla came up in Memphis and has been rapping since she was a teenager. Back in 2022, she went viral on TikTok with the track FNM. And just a couple months later, Yo Gotti signed her to CMG and gave her 500k in cash to celebrate. Glorilla was on the way up and working with some huge artists like Cardi B and Lil Durk. But in March 2023, her career took a tragic turn. Glorilla was performing at a show in Rochester, New York, and after her set ended, people thought they were hearing gunshots. It's not clear what the noise really was, but everyone panicked and started running for the doors. It was a crazy situation all around, and during all the chaos, three people were tragically killed. After it happened, rumors started flying that Glorilla was being sued, and that Yo Gotti was dropping her from CMG to get away from all the drama. I didn't even know it's that. It's not clear if anyone's actually going to sue her, but Glorilla is still on CMG, and it doesn't look like Gotti actually wants to get rid of her. Her I mean, career she's popping is dead, off. but the tragedy at the concert definitely slowed her down right when Glorilla was about to take over. Gotti's just dealing with drama from the rappers he signed, though. Back in 2015, a rapper named Plain James popped off with the track Water Wet. He went out to North Carolina and performed the track while Yo Gotti was there. And a few weeks later, Gotti reached out and said he wanted to fly Plain James out to Miami for a meeting. Plain James got to Miami and played a bunch of his music for Gotti. And he said Gotti was really wanting to sign him to CMG. He signed the contract and it should have been the biggest win of his career. But then everything went left for Plain James. One of his friends called Plain James out for being bisexual. And Plain James said that the vice president of CMG called him and said, well, we don't really fuck with nobody like that. After that, Plain James said he was stuck in a contract with CMG, but they wouldn't even pick up the phone and talk to him anymore. And since he still had a deal with Yo Gotti, Plain James couldn't sign with anyone else to drop new music. Gotti got a lot of hate online when Plain James did an interview with DJ Booth about the situation, but it's not clear how everything shook out in the end. Yo Gotti obviously realized that he needed help running CMG, because in December 2023, he went back to school at UCLA to study management. It probably won't help him sign rappers who will stay out of trouble long enough to bring some money into the label, though. Words can't even explain, like, how I really feel about this shit right now, you know? So I just I try my best to, like, look over it, but I can't. Like, yeah, this shit is still going to be fail. Since Young Dolph's death in November 2021, there have been a series of murders in the Memphis rap community purported to have been carried out in retaliation to his demise. The latest piece in this violent puzzle is the death of Yo Gotti's business partner and brother, Big Juke. As the ongoing case unfolds, one person seemingly singled out is Dolph's cousin and fellow rapper, Key Glock, who was quite vocal about avenging him. Stay with me as we dive into the not-so-subtle connections beef and Key Glock's first apparition in court for Yo Gotti's brother's murder. The grim details of Big Juke's death. As the bits and pieces surrounding the gruesome murder of Yogati's brother, Big Juk, begin to fall into place gradually, more room has been created for speculations that it is possibly connected to the murder 2021 murder of star rapper Young Dolph. Weeks after Big Juk's death, Dolph's cousin and fellow label mate, Key Glock, was apprehended by the Miami Beach Police Department on a minor offense related to the use of the seatbelt. That boy, Key Glock. What? Of the regular he been low-key lately, though. Morphed into an arrest when firearms were discovered in the vehicle. Primarily, Key Glock's arrest is not not remotely connected to the ongoing investigation engulfing the mystery of Big Juke's fatal shooting. Still, it is safe to say that he might have a motive to be involved due to the longtime rap feud between Young Dolph and Big Juke's famous brother, Yo Gotti. The implication of this might lead to him appearing in court in connection to Big Juke's death, especially due to the three semi-automatic pistols found in the 2019 Chevrolet Tahoe he was riding in. However, for us to connect this seemingly unrelated situation, it is pertinent to peel off the background unrest that has radically rocked the Memphis rap scene since 2022. It all rolls back to the jarring demise of Young Dolph in 2021. Why would Key Glock be possibly tied to what happened to Big Juke? Could this possibly be an ominous message to Yo Gotti over his longtime beef with the late Young Dolph in the rap world? It was a day that started with grief and mourning, 
as Yogati and his brother Big Duke attended the funeral of a beloved family member. Little did they know that this somber occasion would soon turn into a nightmare. The funeral took place at the Perignon's Restaurant and Event Center in Memphis, Tennessee, a venue that would forever be etched in their memories. Big Duke, known for his close bond with Yogati, was a pillar of strength for his brother during this difficult time. The two brothers had always been inseparable, supporting each other through the highs and lows of life. Their unbreakable bond was evident in the video footage captured at the funeral service, where they stood side by side, paying their respects to their late family. The last funeral he went to. Uncle Eric. Until he went As to the funeral. day progressed, the funeral service came to an end, and the attendees made their way to the Perignon's restaurant and event center for the repast service. It was meant to be a time of solace and reflection, a chance for family and friends to come together. I didn't and think there's gonna be someone's gonna get shot. Was gonna get shot? Fate had a different plan in store. At approximately 4:15 p.m., chaos erupted outside the venue. Gunshots rang out, shattering the peaceful atmosphere and plunging everyone into a state of panic. In the midst of the commotion, Big Juke and another man found themselves targeted by the shooter. The assailant's motives remained unclear, but the consequences were devastating. Big Juke was struck by gunfire, his life hanging in the balance. As the emergency services rushed to the scene, hope mingled with fear. Would Big Juke survive this senseless act of violence? The other man involved in the shooting was also critically injured, adding to the tragedy that unfolded that day. Big Juke was swiftly transported to St. Francis Hospital, where medical professionals fought to save his life. However, despite their best efforts, the wounds proved fatal. The news of his passing sent shockwaves through the community, leaving friends, family, and fans devastated by the loss of a beloved figure. The investigation into the shooting began immediately, with law enforcement officials working tirelessly to uncover the truth. Surveillance footage from the scene became a crucial piece of evidence, providing valuable insights into the events leading up to the shooting. The authorities were determined to bring the perpetrator to justice and provide answers to the grieving family. As the investigation unfolded, one question lingered in the minds of many. Why would someone target Big Juke and the other man? Was it a case of mistaken identity or was there a deeper motive behind the shooting? These were the questions that haunted the community, desperate for answers in the face of such a senseless tragedy. The investigation was in full swing with detectives analyzing surveillance footage, interviewing witnesses, and following any leads that could potentially lead to the apprehension of the perpetrator. Memphis Deputy Police Chief Paul Wright held a press conference to provide an update on the investigation. He confirmed that the authorities were reviewing the surveillance footage from the shooting, hoping to identify the suspect. The video footage presented images of a white Ford Explorer fleeing the crime scene. However, at that time, no clear suspect had been identified. In retrospect, the details leading up to Big Juke's death eerily suggested that he knew someone was coming for him. On Instagram, the CMG executive made a post addressing fans. He wrote, They don't want to face you, they want to snake you. Stay alert too. Stay alive, watch your back at all times. Following the announcement of his demise, several CMG record label mates and affiliates took to social media paying their final respects. Rappers Glorilla, SG, and Big Boogie shared heartfelt tributes honoring Big Juke. There was yet another subtle yet ominous development in the post made among the Memphis rap community after his death. And this points to Young Dolph's cousin, Paper Root Vicky, who posted a hit list tagged Get Back List. The list notably included the names Old Boy, Old Boy Brother, and Black Youngster. The first two seemingly referred to Yogati and Big Juke, with Black Youngster being a CMG label mate who once called out Young Dolph. A deeper dive into the events leading to Big Juke's murder dates back to the 2023 attack on Yogati's prevail restaurant in 2023. It was a regular evening at Privé, a popular soul food spot in Memphis, Tennessee. Owned by the renowned rapper Yo Gotti, the restaurant was known for its delicious cuisine and vibrant atmosphere. But on this fateful night, tragedy struck. On Wednesday, just after closing time, chaos erupted at Privé. A mass shooting took place, leaving the community in shock and mourning. The incident occurred at the end of the evening as the restaurant was preparing to shut its doors for the night. When the police arrived at the scene, they were met with a scene of horror. Two male victims were found, one of whom was pronounced dead on the spot. The other victim was rushed to a local hospital. Ain't no way don't eat that bitch no more. The identities of the victims have not been released. Adding to the mystery surrounding this devastating event, our hearts go out to there families and loved ones during this difficult time. In addition to the fatalities, five other individuals were injured in the shooting. Four males, aged 37, 35, 31, and 30, along with a 25-year-old female, were transported to nearby hospitals in private vehicles. Their conditions remain unknown, but we hope for their speedy recovery. The police have stated that the shooting was sparked by an altercation that occurred inside the restaurant. The exact details of the altercation are still under investigation. 
and authorities are working tirelessly to gather more information. As news of the shooting spread, many wondered how Yo Gotti, the owner of Privé, would respond. At the time of reporting, he had not made any public statements on his social media platforms. The rapper's spokesperson also remained silent, leaving the public eager for answers. The shooting at Privé has sent shockwaves through the community, raising concerns about safety and security. This incident has shattered the peaceful atmosphere that Privé has maintained for the past 10 years. Arthur Horn, the lawyer representing the owner of Privé, expressed deep sorrow over the shooting. He emphasized that nothing like this had ever happened at the establishment before. According to Horn, the altercation actually took place outside the restaurant in the parking lot, escalating into a shootout. In the series of unfortunate events, Big Juke's death was the next devastating event to hit the family. This definitely calls for concern about whether the Mims family is being delivered deliberately targeted. During the late Memphis native's funeral, the family beefed up security to the point of making headlines. It is safe to say that this was highly motivated by the gruesome way Big Jook died. The residents of Hickory Hills, Memphis, Tennessee, witnessed the heavily guarded program that played out during Big Jook's funeral on January 31st, 2024. The solemn program took place outside of New Direction Christian Church almost three weeks after the media personality passed away. According to the Memphis police, they put in such much manpower outside the church as a deliberate effort. A statement according to interim police chief C.J. Davis addressed the heavy police activity. The statement read, On Wednesday, January 31st, the Memphis Police Department monitored the funeral services of the late Anthony Mims in an ancillary support capacity. The family of Mr. Mims hired a private security detail of approximately 25 armed guards to cover the funeral services inside the church and on the exterior including the roof. The involvement of the Memphis Police Department to monitor the perimeter of the property and the funeral escort was routine as in similar situations and was specifically in the interest of public safety. A close observation of the church and its environs showed the Memphis Police Department squad cars littered around and several blocks away. There were also snipers on top of the building where the funeral took place. A helicopter was seen hovering over the premises to keep the church under watch. One Hickory Hills resident affirmed the presence of security personnel relaying that they believed it was a necessary move. Key Glock's possible motive for Big Juke's murder. The motive for Big Juke's murder could have come from any angle, judging from the survival mode synonymous with the rap community. However, his most notable rap beef was directed at the late young Dolph. Big Juke continuously attacked Dolph verbally before and after his death. This was due to the infamous feud between him and Yo Gotti. In the gritty streets of Memphis, where rap legends like 3-6 Mafia and 8-Ball and MJG were born, two rising stars emerged with a shared connection, young Dolph and Yo Gotti. Rumors circulated that Dolph was once Gotti's brother's plug, solidifying their ties in the underground scene. Young Dolph's upbringing was marked by adversity. Both of his parents were addicted to crack, leaving him to navigate the streets on his own. It wasn't until a near-fatal car crash that Dolph realized the fragility of life and decided to pursue a career in music seriously. Dolph's determination led him to distribute free CDs throughout the city, capturing the attention of the local scene. In 2010, he released his project Welcome to Dolph World, which created a buzz in Memphis and set the stage for his ambitious plans. That same year, Dolph founded his own label, Paper Root Empire, demonstrating his commitment to carving his own path in the industry. By 2013, Dolph's collaboration project with Gucci Mane caught the ear of Yo Gotti, an iconic figure in the Memphis rap scene. Gotti, who had established his own label, Collective Music Group, CMG, in 2012, saw potential in Dolph's talent and reached out with an offer. However, Dolph had already invested significant time, effort, and money into his own career. He turned down Gotti's offer, determined to build his own empire and avoid riding someone else's wave. Dolph's decision to decline Gotti's offer showcased his desire to create his own lane in the industry. He understood the importance of establishing his own brand and didn't want his success to be attributed solely to Gotti's influence. In interviews, Dolph expressed his respect for Gotti's similar journey of building his own empire, acknowledging that Gotti understood his decision. Despite the respect shown in public, tensions began to simmer behind the scenes. Static between Dolph and Gotti started to emerge, hinting at a deeper conflict. However, for a couple of years, no significant incidents occurred between the two artists. Dolph remained focused on his grind, achieving double platinum 
success with his collaboration with OT Genesis. While Gotti shifted his attention to signing and mentoring Black Youngstar, another Memphis rapper who had overcome his own struggles in the streets. Black Youngstar's rise in the rap game added fuel to the fire. In February 2016, Dolph released his debut album, boldly titled King of Memphis. This album title didn't sit well with Gotti, who had previously referred to himself as the King of Memphis. The clash over the album title intensified the brewing tension between the two artists. Dolph made the beef official by taking to Twitter, stating, Bra went from being my hash one fan and wanting to sign me to being my biggest hater, hash facts. Fans anticipated a response from Gotti, given his history of engaging in rap beefs. However, instead of directly addressing Dolph, Gotti chose to let his newly signed artist, Black Youngstar, do the dissing on his behalf. Black Youngstar wasted no time in joining the feud, publicly calling Dolph a derogatory term on social media. He even made threats, claiming that when he saw Dolph, he would smack the shit out of him. Black Youngstar's actions escalated the tension, and he even rolled up to Dolph's neighborhood with a group of his associates. However, no significant altercation occurred during this encounter. Dolph, not one to back down, took to Instagram to air out his grievances with Gotti. He accused Gotti of hating on Memphis rappers and orchestrating the situation with Black Youngstar. Dolph even claimed that Gotti had put the police on him, further intensifying the beef. The feud continued to escalate through music. Dolph's remix of Trouble's track Ready contained lyrics that fans linked to Black Youngstar's song. Heavy. Dolph took direct shots at both Black Youngstar and Gotti, calling out their actions and questioning their authenticity. Black Youngstar responded with his own diss track, Shake Soom, where he called out Dolph by name and made derogatory remarks. The tension between Dolph and Gotti reached its peak when Dolph released the controversial track, Play With Yo. In this wild diss track, Dolph claimed to have been involved with Gotti's baby mama and insulted Gotti's brother. The lyrics were provocative and disrespectful, taking the beef to a new level. Gotti, instead of responding with his own song, took to Twitter to dismiss Dolph's claims. He mentioned his business partnerships with La Reed and Jay-Z, seemingly brushing off the accusations. This tweet, along with a dismissive blah blah blah, added another layer of tension to the already heated feud. The release of the music video for Play With Yo B took the situation to a dangerous level. The video depicted Dolph stealing a girl from a Gotti lookalike, a move that was seen as highly disrespectful. The day after after the video's release, over 100 shots were fired into Dolph's bulletproof SUV while he was in North Carolina. Miraculously, Dolph survived the attack and even performed Play With Yo on stage that same night, showcasing his fearlessness in the face of danger. Black Youngstar was charged with the shooting, but the case eventually fell apart due to a lack of evidence. The incident only fueled Dolph's determination to succeed, and in April 2017, he released an album titled Bulletproof. The track titles in the album formed a message to those who had attempted to take him out, solidifying his resilience and dedication to his craft. The feud between Young Dolph and Yogati seemed to reach a boiling point, with tensions escalating both in music and real-life encounters. However, after Dolph survived the shooting incident, both artists seemed to shift their focus to their respective careers. Dolph's success continued to soar, and he even signed his cousin Key Glock to his label. Gotti, on the other hand, expanded CMG and remained dedicated to his own music. Unfortunately, before the feud could be officially resolved, tragedy struck. In November 2021, Dolph was fatally shot over 20 times by two gunmen at a bakery in Memphis. Rumors immediately circulated, suggesting Gotti's involvement. Oh, that's hot, hot, that's hot, yeah. But there is no concrete evidence linking him to the crime. However, the same cannot be said for Big Jook, who visibly took sides with Gotti during his major beef with young Dolph. Among the prime suspects tied to Dolph's fatal shooting is Henderson Govan, who was labeled the mastermind of the attack. Govan himself faced tragedy amid the legal saga when news got out that his rapper daughter, Lotta Cash Desto, was gunned down. The Houston Police Department was alerted to the fatal shooting that occurred near 5,500 Richard Avenue at about 2.40 a.m. on a Saturday in September 2022. On arrival at the scene, law enforcement discovered a silver Porsche SUV facing westbound with two women critically injured. One of them was Lotta Cash, a fast-rising rapper affiliated with Lil Uzi Vert. Lotta Cash did not make it out alive, but the other two people injured in the shooting were expected to make full recovery. On the other side of the law, Lotta Cash's father faced the justice system for his alleged involvement in Young Dolph's death. While Govan's motive for ordering the shooting of the rapper was not not immediately connected to the Mims brothers. It was later discovered that he had ties with Big Joke. Yeah, that's why I was going to say they're yeah, not allowed. Who passed it like you didn't nigga just didn't die? Hanging out with Gopher. 
Many took it upon themselves to connect the dots while sharing their thoughts on social media. One tweet on X read, Yo Gotti's brother being seen in a picture with the dude who got arrested for putting together Young Dolph's murder shows how much they hated him. It took a team to plot, plan, and strategize on how to take Flippa out. Them boys was sick. Dolph was blowing up. It also didn't help matters that Big Juke heavily mocked Young Dolph after his death. He caught fans' attention after posting images of a mural made to honor Young Dolph, NLE Choppa, and Moneybag Yo. Big Juke insinuated that Dolph did not deserve such an honor. Not long after a mural dedicated to the memories of the Memphis rapper was vandalized. Meanwhile, it is worthy to note that the people from Young Dolph's camp watched all of these unfold. Most notable of them was Key Glock, whose tribute to Dolph held a hint of a promise to retaliate. Who is Key Glock in the grand scheme of things? Growing up in South Memphis, Key Glock was exposed to the harsh realities of his surroundings. The neighborhood was known for its high crime rates and limited opportunities. However, Key Glock refused to let his circumstances define him. Instead, he turned to music as a means of escape and self-expression. Key Glock's musical influences played a significant role in shaping his artistic style. He grew up listening to iconic artists such as Gucci Mane, Lil Wayne, and 3-6 Mafia. Their music resonated with him, providing an outlet for his emotions and inspiring him to pursue a career in hip-hop, Project Pat. He described Project Pat as the Drake of Memphis, recognizing his influence and contribution to the local rap scene. Pat's songs, If You Ain't From My Hood and Gorilla Pimp, left an indelible mark on Key Glock. The latter's chorus, in particular, served as inspiration for one of Key Glock's breakout songs, Dig That. In 2011, Key Glock recorded his first track, a freestyle over futures Ain't No Way Around It. This experience ignited his passion for music and set him on a path towards pursuing a career in the industry. Key Glock's early foray into music allowed him to develop his unique style and hone his skills as a rapper. However, Key Glock's journey was not without its challenges. At the age of 18, he found himself facing legal trouble when he was charged with three counts of aggravated assault related to his involvement in a shooting. This experience served as a turning point in his life, prompting him to reevaluate his choices and focus on his music career as a positive outlet. Music became a distraction from the oftentimes tumultuous life Key Glock experienced. It provided him with a sense of purpose and allowed him to channel his emotions into his art. Through his lyrics, he shared his personal experiences, giving a voice to the struggles and triumphs he encountered along the way. One cannot discuss Key Glock's career without acknowledging the profound influence of his cousin and mentor, Young Dolph. Young Dolph played a pivotal role in shaping Key Glock's musical journey, leaving an indelible mark on his artistry and career trajectory. Let's delve into the impact Young Dolph had on Key Glock's career, their collaborations, and the lasting legacy Young Dolph left behind. Young Dolph, a prominent rapper and entrepreneur, recognized Key Glock's talent and signed him to his record label, Paper Root Empire, in 2017. This partnership would prove to be transformative for Key Glock's career, providing him with guidance, support, and a platform to showcase his unique style. Young Dolph influence on Key Glock extended beyond their professional relationship. As cousins, they shared a deep bond that went beyond music. Young Dolph served as a mentor and guiding figure in Key Glock's life, imparting wisdom and sharing his own experiences in the music industry. Their close relationship was evident in their collaborations and the mutual respect they had for one another. Once in an interview, when asked about what he saw in Glock before supporting his music career, Young Dolph proudly answered, a hustler. He's young and passionate. He loves music like I love music. A lot of people want to do this ST because of the money, and the ones who do, their music actually sucks. Or their music doesn't have any substance to it, doesn't give you any type of feeling, no motivation, no nothing. But people who love their craft, it does something to the people they reach. It's some kind of motivation to the audience. The collaboration between Young Dolph and Key Glock resulted in some of the most memorable moments in their respective careers. Their collaborative album, Dumb and Dumber, released in 2019, showcased their chemistry and dynamic as artists. The album reached an impressive number eight on the Billboard 200 chart, solidifying their status as a formidable duo in the rap industry. Tracks like Major became fan favorites, resonating with listeners and further cementing their their place in the music scene. Following the success of Dumb and Dumber, Young Dolph and Key Glock embarked on a European tour, captivating audiences across Manchester and London. The tour was a testament to their growing fan base and the impact their music had on listeners worldwide. They brought out UK rapper Blade Brown as a supporting act, further showcasing their ability to connect with artists from different regions and cultures. In 2020, Young Dolph and Key Glock kicked off the No Rules Tour, captivating audiences across the United States. The tour, 
which began in Seattle, showcased their electrifying performances and solidified their reputation as dynamic live performers. Fans flocked to see the duo perform their chart-topping hits, creating an unforgettable experience for all in attendance. The success of their combined talent came to a halt in 2021 when Dolph died. This left a huge void in Key Glock's life, and he did not hold back from expressing his feelings. Months after his beloved cousin's death, Key Glock posted a heart-wrenching tribute where he referred to young Dolph as his left-hand man, brother, cousin, and mentor. He did not hold back on his deep feelings as he expressed the depth to which his cousin's death affected him. Key Glock's lengthy post also included a strong reminder that he would always look out for Dolph, even in death. Several months later, Key Glock continued to struggle with the harsh reality of his cousin's demise. On Twitter, Glock shared a series of posts lamenting about Dolph and the pain of losing a loved one. The rapper was so deeply affected that he took down all his social media pages. He would later return to express his frustration. He wrote, stop asking me if I'm okay, knowing damn well I ain't. The post also included a broken red heart emoji. Glock would give his first interview after Dolph's death in April 2022, where he further suggested that he was struggling with reality. He said, I'm maintaining, like I'm not getting better. I'm not getting worse. I'm just here right now. I can't shake it, man. I ain't even gonna lie. I can't even shake it. It is what it is. When Key Glock was asked if he had found a way to manage the situation and deal with grief, the rapper replied, Nobody can tell me that nothing I can do can make me feel better. Beyond all reasonable doubt, we can deduce that Key Glock was one of those most affected in the murder case of young Dolph. Judging from his past brushes with the law and the harsh impact of the streets, Glock could be well on his way to avenging his cousin's death. His arrest in Miami came with incriminating items like the pistols found in the car he rode. With further investigations being carried out on Big Jook's death, he might stand in line for trials. This remains to be seen as the cops continue to unravel the mystery and weird connections in the Memphis rap scene. All right, folks, there you have it on the series of happenings that keep rocking the rap world. If you enjoyed walking through this mystery, click on the next card to find more stories. So long. All right, back. So y'all sleep in that situation, man. King luck, man. I think he's trying to stay low key. You know what I'm saying? Especially after that gun, that gun case, man. And... What's weird is how they were trying to say that King Glock knew one of the hitters that took out uh, Young Dolph. You know what I'm saying? Big Jook had it coming. Let's be honest, man. Big Jook, you making fun of Young Dolph and his murals and his music getting taken out. And you talking crazy and spicy on the live. It's like, damn, nigga. Motherfuckers gonna get mad. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, you just took away Young Dolph. You, you don't see all the other niggas that got shot up or they cribs that got shot up. You know what that's gonna happen because you big, you, you, yo, got your brother? Nigga, you will let an open funeral for somebody else just for you to be put in the funeral now. You know what I'm saying? And it's funny, yo, got wasn't even at the, yo, got wasn't even at the funeral when they got shot. He already done left. It was just Yo Gotti and the mom, I mean, just Big Junk and, her, and his mom, who almost got taken out. You know what I'm saying? Black Youngster crashed out his whole career for the moment, in which I probably, I'm probably thinking that he probably don't give a fuck. He probably just want the money on. Let's be honest, you know what I'm saying? A lot of niggas get the money on, they good with that shit. They don't need no, they don't need no, no, um, no clout after all they got the, ba the bag off these niggas. But it's like, damn, nigga, you crashed out your whole career. For a moment, you know what I'm saying? It's like you ready to put your whole life online for a beat that you had nothing to do with. Like, that's goofy shit. You know what I'm saying? And now Key Glock, you know what I'm saying? I just wonder, like, you know what I'm saying? Is he gonna is he gonna stay in Memphis anymore? You know what I'm saying? After all that situation, all that 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 wild shit with, or is he even willing to stay in Memphis anymore after all that shit? You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers here, they, they cousin, they best friend die from their eyes like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's wild because, you know, you try to put yourself through, them, through their shoes, but you, it's impossible. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, damn, you know, nigga already tried to take your ass out one time, nigga. And it's crazy, because they didn't get that nigga went on. Um, they didn't get the nigga when um when he was in the car. They got him when he was out the car. You dig what I'm saying, Crip? That's why everybody, everybody was trying to say that Makita set him up because the the girl who worked at Makita's 
was a stripper who worked for Yo Gotti. You know what I'm saying? She dropped the location of when that yo when Young Dolph was gonna be at the Makina's cookie thing. You know what I'm saying? So the whole situation, man, just a mess. You know what I'm saying? And Kid Glock, man, gonna have to hold that shit down. I don't know if, gonna, if it's gonna still be PRE. You feel what I'm saying? Especially with the feds and the FBI looking at you. Most definitely, they might have to change the label. But I feel like, man, that Yo Gotti gone. I don't think Yo Gotti going back to Memphis. I'm just gonna be honest with that. I don't think Yo Gotti going back to Memphis because, like, why we risk going back to Memphis when your brother already died? You know, I already took out mother, motherfuckers. Everybody who's around that situation and almost died. It's like, damn, why the fuck would I go back to Memphis, nigga? It's like, shit, you know what I'm saying? But his artists like Glorilla and Moneybag Yo and some of the other artists he got, you know, like Black Hamster and shit, how they career gonna, gonna get impacted by this situation? Like, Glorilla, I remember she signed to Yo Gotti. I had no problem with that. She's a female. Um, Moneybag Yo was already signed to Yo Gotti. Black Yenster was one of the hitmen. So it's like, you know, where it's gonna have an impact on their career? I don't think, like, we haven't really heard from um, Moneybag Yo ever since he got to that argument with Big Dirty. Then, um, Glow really, you know, she's been kind of low key, but she's been popping up a little bit going crazy. But I don't feel like her and Yo Gotti need each other to be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna promote. My all right, so I gotta be right beside her. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think. That's the same with money back. Yo, they don't have to be yo guy. They don't have to be right beside the niggas for them niggas to pop off. They already kind of popped off. He just gotta put the the money on and the influence behind it. all that and the in the security and all that shit. Other than that, man, I feel like man, this situation will keep on going, man. And I hate to say it, probably won't go. It won't stop until yo guy is gone. I think that's just the, the, the highest, highest shit gonna have to happen for the, the situation to stop. If, when Yo Gotti is gone, I think all the shooting is done. You know what I'm saying? But I don't wanna wish, wish on another man death, you know what I'm saying? But situation right here, man, it's gonna continue and continue and continue, man. And like I said, man, Kid Glock, man, they try to put the nigga as, he try to set the nigga up with Big Jig getting shot. I was, I'm pretty sure he saw that Big Jig was making fun of, um, Young Dolph, and they've been having beef. You know what I'm saying? They've been having beef. So, I don't know if he put the money on up to, to Gar, Gar, what's his name, Garcia, Hernandez, whatever the fuck his name was, that black dude, but that nigga right there, man, he already, done, I think the, his boys done snitched already, straight dropping them niggas. He was locked up, but the family let the nigga go because they don't have enough proof on the nigga. So, it's like, man, we just gonna see how it all happened. Like I said, man, it does look wild that Key Glock knew one of the suspects who killed Young Dolph. I hate to say it, that looked wild as fuck. But it's not too uncommon once you know once you live in the same city and everybody know everybody. So it's not too uncommon, but it's like, damn nigga. I used to be like, damn, I took a picture with the nigga who took out my boy. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, man, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe. And we out this bitch hood and outside clear game. Hey, Dad, you know what I when we need to talk about. This shit be legendary. You know this is instrumental. You the engineer on it, so. Hold that camera.